So today is the second installment out of three of our creed. And our creed, if you look in your missalettes, is found on page 80. Thank you. Somebody beat me to it. Page 80. Now, the new creed will be different in, in the third installment. We'll really focus on some of those differences. Today, I want to continue to talk about the nature of this creed. Recall that from the first installment, I said there are two creeds we use in our church, liturgies. The, what we have here is called the Nicene Creed, and we have the Apostles' Creed. We used the Apostles' Creed today, didn't we? We did. When we renewed our baptismal vows in that three-part form, that's the Apostles' Creed. And it has been used for the renewal of baptism and baptismal promises since the inception of the uh, beginning of the Apostles' Creed. The Nicene Creed was not. The Nicene Creed was a statement of faith and orthodoxy to keep the church centered and in right teaching. Remember to understanding right and wrong today in the homily? Well, this helps us to know what is right and what is wrong about our beliefs in God and in Jesus Christ and in the church. This is an orthodox statement formed at the Nicene Council. What was the big deal? Well, the big deal was this. Who is Jesus Christ? Who is the Holy Spirit? They kind of knew who the Father was. They had Him pretty much figured out. They, they'd had this understanding of the Father carried all throughout Judea history. The history of Judaism. They learned who the Father was. Who the Son was had to unfold with the coming of the Son. Who the Holy Spirit was had to unfold with the sending forth of the Spirit. And this new understanding of God is triune. How do they nail this down? And who is the person of Jesus Christ? The whole argument here is, how do we protect the humanity of Christ? And how do we protect the divinity of Christ? Period. That is pretty much what was trying to be figured out in this creed. Some said he's more human than divine. Some said he's more divine than human. And they clashed. The ones that said he was more human than divine said he was a creature, the greatest creature of all. He came into being in time. That sometime in time he was created by God. He's a creature. He's created a creature. The other side said, no, he's divine, therefore he can't be very much human because you can't mix the two. And they had what was called docetism. Docet means in Greek, seems, appears. They said, no, he only appeared human. He wasn't really human. He came down and took on the appearance of a human being, but he was fully divine and, and really wasn't human at all. These two sides clashed. The church decided with a uniting of all the bishops, you've got to have both. You've got to have both. They're both revealed to be true. He has to be fully human. He has to be fully divine. He can't be a creature created in time because he's divine. So they came up with the words begotten, born. Not born in time, born from all time. Is my four minutes up? Four minutes is up. <laughs>